he'll always be all that we need. And if we ever find ourselves in a place that we have nothing but Jesus, he's still everything we need. If we ever find our place that everything in our life is gone except Jesus Christ, we still have everything that we need. Mike, will you lead us in the prayer for the offering, and we're going to get started in worship. Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for another blessed opportunity to be in your house, God. We've come to worship you. We've come to lift you up. We've come to magnify you in this place because you are the only one deserving of that, God. You are King Jesus. You are the great I Am, and we worship you in this house. Now, Father, we have come to uh, this portion of the service to take up an offering, God. And, Lord, I ask that you bless the gift and the giver. And, Lord, you said in your word, give, and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men add unto your bosom. God, you have taught us through your word to be good givers, to be givers. So, God, I pray that your people would honor your word tonight and be obedient to your word tonight. Bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
is all, he's all that we need tonight, church. Hallelujah. have still got the anointed power on them. Those old songwriters that, that pen the words, though earthly friends may turn me down, I'll still retain the peace I found in Jesus. And from that moment on, you walked into a brand new world. And I got news for you, church. Until I walk in that brand new world, I'm going to keep walking for Jesus. Amen. I said, until we walk over into the glory land, we're going to keep walking. Oh, come on. Pull that second verse up one more time. Is it okay if we have a little bit of church in here tonight? While traveling down this sinful road, I had no friend to share. I know I wondered here and there, and no one seemed to care. But when I knelt that Yeah. 
how many know and are thankful because of the blood you stepped into a brand new world. For the blood. I'm still thankful for the only thing that could take separated man and God and bring them together. The precious, precious blood.
Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of the Lamb. How many believes he the same God tonight? Amen. You know what he did way back then? He's still the same God to do today. He's never changed. The Bible says, God even said himself, I am the Lord thy God and I change not. He said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what God did way back then, if you need a miracle today, he's still the same God who can work a miracle in your life tonight. All you have to do is call upon him. All you have to do is ask. And he said, you shall receive. Trust him tonight. Listen to the words of this song. I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. Oh, rock of ages, I'm standing on 
believe that tonight, what these words say. He heard your cry back then. He heard their cry back then. He hears your cry tonight. I know in my life I need him to be healer. I've got some people in my life I need him to be savior too. And I believe with every fiber of my being that I'm standing on this stage. He's still healer. He's still savior. He's still deliverer. He's still a fire walker and a sea walker. He is the same God tonight as he was back then. Sing that. Oh, you hear your children now, God. You are the same God. You are the same God. You answered prayers back then. He still answered prayers. And you will answer. He will answer. You are the same. You are the same God. You were providing then. You are providing now. You are the same. Do you Come need on, God to move? I want you, you to see are the same God. You moved in power then. God moved in power now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You were.
is the same God, church. He is the same God, church. He is the same God, church. His promises and His Word are yes and amen. Not one time has He fallen short. Not one time has His grace been insufficient. Not one time has His healing power not reached down and touched His children. Not one time has salvation run dry. Not one time has the blood from the cross of Calvary run dry for those who will seek His face. He is the same God. By the very definition of his name, he is infallible and unchangeable. Therefore, it stands to reason the only thing that has changed is us. Oh, Spirit of God, have your way in this place. Mm. Put that bridge back up. your children then you hear your children now you are the same God you are the same God you answered prayers back then and you will answer now you are the same God you are the same God you were providing then you're still providing good God, church.
Believe not the lies of the enemy that would tell you that my power and my dominion has diminished in any way. I am Jehovah. I am Elohim, the creator of all. I am God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. I am the great I am. There is nothing that is done, nothing that happens that I am not completely aware of. If I care for the lilies of the valley, how much more will I care for you, my beloved? Rest assured that my eye is not far from you, nor my presence away from you. But if you will humble yourself, seek my face, and turn from your wicked ways, I will meet you right where you are and show you that I am still God. Come on, you better worship him in the house tonight. You better praise him in the house tonight that he's still the same God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art! Oh, how great thou art! Sing it one more time. Oh, then sings my. the Lord. Y'all just stay right here. We're going to make this the abbreviated version. Go on and sit down for just a minute. Sit down, but don't sit down on the Lord. Don't sit down on your praise. 
We're going to keep them up here because we're about to praise tonight. I don't know about y'all, but I've come with a praise in my mouth tonight. And this message ain't even about praise. The pursuit of Christ, not happiness. The pursuit of Christ, not happiness. Matthew 16, 21 through 26. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. So tonight, I want to talk to you about pursuing Christ and not happiness. We live in a society that is all about self, all about self-righteousness, self-glorification, chasing after happiness, chasing after the next thing that would fulfill us, and it's all for naught. So what is happiness? It's defined as a state of well-being, a pleasurable or enjoyable experience. It's so ingrained in our society that it exists in the Declaration of Independence, as many of you probably know. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Psychology today credits happiness to several different things, not the least of which your genetic makeup, life circumstances, achievements, marital status, social relationships, and even your neighbors. Now, I won't lie to you, having bad neighbors is not fun. But, <laughs> somebody felt that a little too personally. There <laughs> there's only one commonality here, and that is that all of these are based in self and natural circumstances. You look further at the etymology of the word happiness, which is the history of how a word was created. It was originally formed in the 14th century, the root hap, H-A-P-P, -P, lucky or favored by fortune. And the suffix, the added y, means fool or characterized by. You combine these together for the meaning lucky or favored by fortune, being in advantageous circumstances, prosperous, turning out well. So you can see from the very inception, the very creation of the word, that it's based in life circumstances. It's based what's seen in the natural. Stick with me. I promise. I didn't come here to lecture. I came here to teach and to preach. So this is telling us if we pursue happiness, if we seek after happiness, what are you going to get? You'll gain everything in the world, potentially, but that's all you'll get. There's nothing waiting for you in, in eternity except for hell. We see with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, whenever they first committed sin, they were separated from Christ. At this moment, a God-sized void was created. And that void has existed ever since then. What does happiness seek to do to the non-believer? It seeks to fill a void that's God-sized. Substance abuse. Sex. Pornography. Every wicked thing. Gossip. We don't want to talk about that one, but that's one too. Talking about your brother. Envy. Strife. The list goes on and on. All of these things based in self pursuing happiness, trying to make yourself feel better, trying to glorify yourself. And on and on and on, you walk in this path and you still come up empty. You still come up short. We teach kids every day in these classrooms that a circle goes in a circle hole, a square goes in a square hole, triangle and triangle hole, trapezoid and trapezoid, so on and so forth. Now, I'm not a geometry whiz. I'm not the smartest that there was. But based on that, 
I would say that a God-sized void could only be filled by. I mean, we try to overcomplicate it a lot of times, folks, but it's really not that complicated. That's just the opening. I'm trying to abridge, I promise. First, deny yourself. Now, we see this existing in society, existing even in the Christian world in a lot of ways that are very shallow and surface level. What I want to teach you tonight, what I want to encourage you tonight is to take it to the next level. Yes, we have to deny the self. We have to deny the lust of the flesh. We have to deny all of these things. But the word deny, if you look at it a little bit deeper, the Greek word apername primarily speaks of a relationship. So it's deeper than just saying no to what I desire in my flesh. It's saying no to the relationship with yourself. Christ is not asking you to simply follow a list of do's and don'ts, although he provides those because we're ignorant in a lot of ways and we need it. That's not what he wants. He wants a full, pure relationship with you. He wants you to love him first and foremost before yourself. So denying yourself is so much deeper than just denying the lust of the flesh. It's denying the love of your life being yourself over him. He has to have dominion in your life. If you are going to fully pursue him, he has to be the number one love of your life, even over yourself. You will do so much more for somebody that you love than simply somebody that provides for you. If you look at God solely as a provider and you have no personal relationship with him, well, guess what? When the provision runs out, so does your relationship. If you look at him as somebody who is just a healer, and he is, praise God, when the healing stops or it doesn't come in the way you want it, what happens? Your relationship is gone. Forsake all for the pursuit of the kingdom. Love him first. Deny yourself. Number two, take up your cross. Now, you may have heard lots of people say, well, this is just my cross to bear. Anybody ever heard that? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we say this in response to circumstances of life that are excruciating or more than we want to deal with. And while walking with Christ, we are going to experience those things. I believe that the message of this is much deeper. In the Roman Empire, crucifixion was the most brutal method of execution, the worst that there was. But one of the biggest components of it was the criminal carrying the cross to their point of execution. This carrying of the cross was a moment whenever the Roman Empire said, you will bow in submission to our authority. So I want to challenge you to go a little bit deeper and see taking up your cross for Christ as bowing to his submission. Yes, there are going to be things that are going to be hard. There will be thorns in the flesh. But carrying the cross is about submission to his authority, to his power and to his dominion. Second Corinthians 521, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The work of the cross is the most important thing in the conversion of a Christian. Without it, none of us could receive salvation. Not one of us. But Jesus was asking his disciples in this moment, will you submit your will your authority, and yourself to me? Will you carry your cross? Are you willing to give up everything for me and the work of the kingdom? Again, this pushes back to if he's not the first love in your life, you're not going to submit to him. Wives, you will not submit to your husband if you don't love your husband. I mean, we see it echoed all throughout creation. If we don't love first, there will be no submission. Number three, follow Christ. The Greek word for follow, akolotheo, 
means to follow one who leads, to accompany. It's a verb. If you'll notice, all three of these things are verbs. Following Christ, pursuing Christ is an active thing. It's something you have to commit to. It's something you have to determine yourself to do. It's not something that you can do passively. It takes work. Pursuing Christ is active. It's a daily decision. It takes enormous effort and is arguably one of the most challenging things that you will ever do in this life. But its rewards are eternal. And if we are following Christ, we're going to make every effort to be like Christ. Not conform to the ways of this world, but conform to him. 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. We're going to face persecution. It's promised. If we don't love the Lord first and foremost and draw our strength from him, if we don't submit our will to him, and if we don't imitate him in everything that we do, we will surely fall. Every day is not going to be fun. It won't be your favorite, and it certainly is not going to yield happiness. But, who loves a good but? No matter how bad the day is, how many of you know that joy is so much greater than happiness? Completely different. Joy from the Father can fill your soul no matter what the circumstances in the natural are. Joy will carry you through. Psalms 30 and 5. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holy name. For His anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So you're going to walk through some stuff. This life is not going to be easy. But if you are pursuing Christ first and foremost, if you are loving him first, if you are forsaking yourself, if you are humbling yourself, submitting your will to him, then guess what? You have access to his authority. That means that the Lord of hosts, the one who controls all of creation, is right there with you. Those words that we just sang about the same God who was back there who split the sea for Moses is the same God that will split the sea of your situation today. As I said, he has not changed. We have changed. We live in self-pride, in self-righteousness. We don't want to deny ourselves. We don't want to make the sacrifice that says, Lord, I will choose you first, even if it means I don't get whatever it is. What happens if the Lord tells you to sell everything that you own and leave tomorrow? Would you do it? Would you forsake everything? Would you deny yourself? Would you submit to his will, truly? We will have trials. We will have trouble. But I love what the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. If we follow Christ, we're going to work. We're going to face hard days. But he will be with us. He will be our strength. He will be our very present help in time of need. Isaiah 12 and 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He is. He also is become my salvation. 
2 Corinthians 12, 9. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I don't know about you, but that takes a certain kind of being sold out to be able to say that. And I'll challenge you with this. If you ever question whether or not you're truly pursuing Christ and not happiness, check the fruit that your life is yielding. Galatians 5, 22 through 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. Hmm. That means when somebody gets mad at you, you, you can't get mad back at them and lash out at them. Goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the, affli- the, affli- the afflictions and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be deserious of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. If you pursue happiness, as I have done in a large portion of my life, it will leave you broken. It will leave you emptier than you ever thought possible. It will leave you feeling abandoned and most certainly ashamed. You may find those brief moments of happiness, of thrill. But we know the only wage of all these things, of every sin, is death. But the good news is there is another option. By the grace of God, we have been afforded another option to pursue Christ. Choose daily to serve him. Deny yourself. Make him the first love of your heart. Pick up your cross. Submit your will to his. Knowing that ultimately he knows so much better than we do anyway. I don't know why we try to take reins of our own life whenever all we see is what's right here in front of us. And even that is cloudy. He sees everything. It's laid out before him. He sees every permutation of every decision that you could ever make. And if we would but humble ourselves to him, submit our will to his, he would carry us through. And that's the only way that we can follow him. Truly pursuing and following Christ, it will not be easy. And as I've already said, it cannot be done casually. It will take dedication, determination, and grit And being completely sold out. But I think of how fervently I pursued sin. And if each of us think back. To how much vigor we pursued the lust of the flesh with. And where did it leave us? This is what I love. What has Christ done for us before we were even born? Before our parents even thought of us? He cared enough to send his only begotten son. To pour out his blood in atonement for all mankind. So why not pursue him? Why not make him who loved you before this earth even knew that you were coming into existence? Why not love the one who, as he hung in agony on a cross, saw through the cosmos of time and said, even for you. Even for you. The one who controlled 
Not one moment did he lose the power and the authority to call down all of heaven to rescue him. It was a willing choice and sacrifice that he did not have to make, that he owed not one of us. But even still, even still, he loved us that much. So the question tonight, as you stand, the question tonight is will you Decide completely to pursue Christ. Will you make the active decision? And I'm not just saying that you pick up your Bible and you read it for 15 minutes in the morning. I'm not saying you just say your blessing before you pray over your food. I'm talking about a dedicated, sold out, first love mentality that is truly willing to forsake everything for the kingdom. One that's unashamed to be a witness for him. Each and every one of us could do more. If we're honest, every one of us could do more. The altar call tonight is for every believer to come and to surrender all unto Him. To deny the love of self and anything else before Him and Him alone. To pick up your cross in submission to His authority and sovereignty of your life. And to commit that you will follow wherever He may lead, no matter the cost, knowing that He will provide everything that you need along the way. So I invite you tonight, as we sing this simple chorus, I surrender all to come and surrender to him tonight. Oh, I surrender, I surrender all. Come on, come into the Father tonight. to hear Yes. 
Just the voices. Oh, I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all. All to thee. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. Just one more time, just one more time. And I surrender all. Yes, Lord, we surrender. I surrender all. All to Thee, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the truth of your word and the promises that it holds, Father. Thank you that you are the same God. And thank you, Lord, that you do not forsake us whenever we would forsake you. But time and time and time and time and time and time and time again, you extend your grace and your mercy unto us. But Father, let us not use that as an excuse not to pursue you with everything that we are. Father, I pray for your conviction, a conviction that would shape us and mold us into the vessels you have called us to be. Lord, that whenever we stand before you, we could hear you say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Let us put you first and foremost in our lives. Let us submit our will to yours at every turn and let us humbly and passionately follow after you as you give us the strength to do so. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the body said, amen. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for allowing me another opportunity to share the word as the Lord shared it with me. I pray that you would take it and that you would let it challenge you as it's supposed to do, that you would let it correct your ways in places that you may err, and that ultimately we would all draw closer to Christ. I want to see miracles. I want to see miracles. I want to see revival. I don't want to just read about it. I love the history. I love that it happened. I'm so thankful that it happened. But I want to be in the midst of it. And the Lord is looking for a remnant of believers who will sell out completely. He hasn't changed. He has not changed the whole message. He has not changed. All of time, He has not changed. Challenge yourself. Push yourself to give your all for Him. 
and we will see revival. We will see the lost come home. That's what it's all about. Be blessed this week. Share the gospel with somebody. And by all means, when you get discouraged, check your heart. Where's your first love? Submit yourself. Yield yourself to him. And he will renew your strength. Because his is endless. He loves you, church. He loves you so much more than I ever could. And he knows you so much better than I ever could. And all your needs, he will supply. I believe it. Do you believe it? Be dismissed. Let the love of the Lord go with you. Be with you and keep you. In his name, amen.